good Sunday, May 2nd, and we are looking at a red flag warning in effect from today about 11 a.m. until Tuesday, 5 p.m. This is for areas right around Redding all the way south toward the west in the coastal range region west of I-5, down through Fairfield, Vacaville, areas of Vallejo, Stockton, Modesto, and then as far south as about Turlock, just approaching Merced. These are areas that are going to experience some strong winds, very dry conditions, and warming temperatures as we move from Sunday to Tuesday. I'm talking mid-80s turn to almost mid-90s by Wednesday before we see those when the winds settle down. And the big concern here, of course, is always the winds. When you have the winds, you can always have dry conditions you can always have warm temperatures, but when the winds kick in, that's almost a recipe perfect for the fire weather warning, which does take effect because if anything does break out, a fire starts and you have those strong winds, that fire could move very rapidly. So with the sunny, sunny and dry conditions today, that's again continuing pretty much throughout the week, but the red flag warning is in effect until Tuesday for the fire danger. Now winds are going to be anywhere from 10 to 25 miles per hour. We could see some of the gusts as high as 30 to 40 miles per hour. So that's where the big concern comes in with rapid spread of potential fires. That's always a big concern for firefighters. Now the high pressure system overhead is just over the Pacific just a little bit, but it's just enough to have this low pressure system here just to the west be close enough to bring in some of those stronger winds, drying out the grasses, and this will, this really is what happens this time of year. We start getting the drying of the grasses, but it's the strong wind events that cause the danger and the major heat up that's happening a little too early. We always hope that this kind of event happens closer to June and July rather than from April to May. So that's what we're kind of seeing now is that April to May transition. The high pressure of the rotation, take notice of how that rotates clockwise motion. Meanwhile, the low pressure moving counterclockwise helps to funnel in a lot of the winds from the north. The north northwest winds here that are being funneled into the valley and the coastal range is going to really cause some of the strong wind events we're going to see from today through Tuesday and also cause that concern for fire threat. Now again, from Redding all the way down toward Turlock, we're currently looking at clear skies overhead. Any kind of precipitation that moves over is moving up and over us toward areas of Oregon, so we don't see anything in sight when it comes to rainfall for at least the next three, four days. And if there's anything in sight, it's again headed way up north and bypassing us all together. The strong winds take effect. And let's talk about those winds now. We're looking at calm winds in the morning, but things start ramping up by 11 a.m. You're looking here at 4.30 p.m. where we start to see 20 to 25 mile per hour winds in the valley. And I want you to look at the colors, the yellow, the green shades. That's 20 to 30 mile per hour winds. And you see the red shade. That's anywhere from 30 to 40 mile per hour winds. And you see that just offshore. And we will expect to see some areas developing that red shade, especially for the coastal range as it starts moving in for the uh, following day, Monday into Tuesday. Take a look there. You can see here in Monday, 12.30 p.m., some of the red shade starts to come in for areas of the coastal range. That's not good because this is typically where we start to see the major fire events. We see areas around Napa just getting close to Santa Rosa, all the dry area here, Lake Berryessa. These are the areas where we constantly see year after year the drying of the grasses. All this area where we even potentially start to see those major fires take place. So not good news when it comes to major drying happening this early. Now we're going to continue to see the strong winds picking up again, but by Tuesday you're looking at 5 a.m. This is probably the slowest part of the day when you see about 5 to 10 mile per hour winds, 16 in Fairfield. They will pick up by the afternoon again. To up to about 20 miles per hour, then that should be the last of it. Let's talk about the drying effects. Now, humidity plays a huge part in this. When you get any kind of humidity, 10 to even 20 percent, that's when it starts getting bad because you're looking at very dry fuel. We talk about fuel, we're talking about grass, grass, weeds, anything that catches fire, that is fuel for the fire. Now, through the morning hours, we're looking at 72 percent humidity. That's actually pretty good. And looking at 60s there, Stockton, Modesto, 80 percent Jackson. So that's good for the morning. We get to recover in the overnight hours, but by the afternoon Sunday, we're going to start to see these numbers down anywhere from 10 to 20 percent humidity, which is very bad. Looking into Monday morning, it's going to be interesting to see what these numbers look like. If they're closer to about 30 to 40 percent, we didn't recover very well overnight. So you're seeing that nice recovery overnight from Saturday to Sunday, but now that the red flag warning is in effect, we don't expect those numbers to look very good moving from Monday to Tuesday morning. Now drying is going to continue. Notice that that low pressure system we showed you earlier has continued to shift its way toward the east with dry conditions in the valley and most of California in general. Now offshore, we're going to continue to see drying, but notice that 
you see a little green pushing up and again up and over California once again and we're going to continue to move through May 11th. You notice we didn't get a drop of rain in that time frame so not good news for us in that 8 to 14 day precipitation outlook. We are looking much drier than we should be this time of year from central to northern California up into Oregon, the driest areas. The gray shades normal for this time of year, so they're used to seeing pretty dry conditions in Southern California now. And then most of central to eastern U.S. dealing with much wetter than average temperatures, especially for areas of the Midwest. And we'll see dry conditions for the desert southwest. So not good news there as well as they've been dealing with fires in Arizona and areas of Utah in major drought. 90 degrees from Monday through Wednesday. Wednesday will be the warmest day of the week as we even approach in mid 90s. So that's pretty hot already for the first week of May. We will drop in temperature significantly as we move from Thursday to Friday in those low 80s to upper 70s. And finally, the rest of the week, we are looking at those temperatures there in the mid 80s.